this time on Film Racker, we are talking about movies directed by George Clooney. Clooney certainly made a name for himself in front of the camera, but for this video, we're just going to look at the seven films he also spent behind it. And while a lot of actors try their hand at directing, it's not that often that one manages to really break out, and while Clooney's had his share of misses, he's also had some legitimate hits. So let's take a look and count them down. Number seven, Monuments Men. Monuments Men was the butt of a few jokes when it came out, mostly deservedly so. It's a weird movie based on the apparently true story of a group of older art aficionados who enlisted in World War II as a special unit tasked with saving great works of art, and it works about as well as that sounds. It tries to ride the line between comedy and uplifting drama, but it does not do either well, despite an all-star cast that includes Bill Murray, Matt Damon, and of course, Clooney himself. But despite the stars and some nice-looking scenery, it ends up being a bunch of mostly disconnected threads that don't go deep enough into the people or the art. Number six, Leatherheads. Leatherheads is not the clunker that the reviews would have you believe. It actually has a lot of charm and a terrific 1920s aesthetic with some quick-witted dialogue and some legitimately funny scenes. Case in point, the old-timey fistfight near the tracks. Where it falls off is the central love triangle, which is never fooling anyone, and a runtime that goes about 40 minutes longer than it needs to. Still, if like me, you fall into that weird Venn diagram of loving old-timey Hollywood and old-timey football, you may like this more than you should. Number 5. Suburbicon Clooney teams up here with his good buddies the Coen brothers to create a darkly quirky kind of crime story set in the suburbs of the 1950s. The result is weird, but mostly engaging, with Matt Damon in particular doing a good job as the lead, and it also does a good job of illustrating the dark underbelly of what is so often shown as an idyllic period, but the off-kilterness of the Coen script doesn't really mesh with Clooney's style, and it ends up feeling like a slicker, more grown-up version of the early Cohen's Raimi film Crime Wave. I'm not positive if that is or isn't a compliment. Number four, The Ides of March. Ides of March is a decent political thriller with a solid leading turn from Ryan Gosling, along with Philip Seymour Hoffman and Paul Giamatti. The first half is particularly interesting as it lays the groundwork and builds a few interesting characters, a moral quandary, and an obviously doomed romance, but then it falters in the second half until it just kind of peters out. In the end, it still gives us a bit of a glimpse under the hood of a political campaign, but it never quite reaches the heights promised by its Shakespearean title. Number three. The Midnight Sky. Clooney's most recent film is also one of his best. The Midnight Sky does a good job of interconnecting two stories in very different settings with very different characters in a way that mostly makes a whole that's more than the sum of its parts. It helps that both halves are equally interesting, even if the payoff is telegraphed. It's fascinating to watch both the crew of the ship and Clooney's character struggling to communicate from the most isolated of extremes, and even though it is incredibly gloomy, there's just enough brightness underneath. Although, stay for the final credits if you really want to see that reaction set in. Number two, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. There is always trepidation when an actor decides they want to direct, but thankfully Clooney came out of the gate with a bang. The Charlie Kaufman penned Confessions tells the charmingly strange story of a TV game show host slash producer slash super secret CIA agent. And though the events are generally agreed to be autobiographical only in the loosest sense of the word, the movie is no less entertaining for it. It moves well, looks great, generally lands right on the money, and stars Sam Rockwell in a role that feels like it was made for him. Number one, good night and good luck. There was never any doubt. While Confessions put Clooney on the map as a director, Good Night and Good Luck solidified him. The story of Edward R. Murrow versus Joe McCarthy is as relatable today as it has ever been, but even if the script written by Clooney wasn't so compelling, the gorgeous black and white visuals and the phenomenal performances would be more than enough. Clooney does a terrific job here of 
interweaving archival footage and black and white film in a way that makes you forget that you aren't actually watching a documentary and there are not enough superlatives for the cast led by David Stratham. This is going to be a tough one for Clooney to top. And that is it. Please let me know in the comments which are your faves and which other actor directors you think have actually made it work. And please do like and subscribe. And hopefully I will see you all next time.